Welcome to the mountains of Northern Pakistan. I'm Ben King and I have a Christmas surprise for you today. So I'm gonna... Oh. The side stem wasn't down properly. <laughs> oh no. All right, let's get this up. Oh no. Ah. Okay, let's do that again. All right, hello, I'm Ben King. Welcome to the mountains of Northern Pakistan. I'm here in the Kalkaran Mountains, absolutely freezing. It's winter time now. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's a better time to do this. But uh, everyone's been asking me uh, over the past year what gear I've got on the bike. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to film a gear video go through how the bikes perform, go through all the stuff I've been using, camping gear, everything. And uh, yeah, and just tell you what I've been using for the past 60 months on the road. And uh, I probably should have done this like six months ago when I was sweating in the deserts of Iran in 50 plus degrees, instead of in minus four, minus three degrees here in the mountains in the winter. Yeah, anyway, also I've picked this bike up so many times because I keep crashing, yet I'm still unfit. Unbelievable. Alrighty, let's do this. Beautiful. Three, two, one, cha cha chow. Here is a rough overview of the route I've taken over the past couple of years on my trip. So, I left London, my home, in 2017. I then headed south into France, down to the Spanish-French border, before heading east to Monaco, Italy, then heading north into Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, then into the Nürburgring in Germany, before finally heading southeast into Austria, Slovenia, Hungary, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Serbia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, Macedonia, Bulgaria, then finally heading east into Turkey, Bear in mind, this is all the middle of winter, crazy snow, crazy ice, it was nuts. <laughs> anyway, couldn't get into Syria, couldn't get into Iraq because of visa issues, went to Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, to Baku, then finally into Iran. I did like a weird like zigzag of Iran because it was such a vast, incredible country. And then finally made my way south down to the Persian Gulf in southern Iran, to the island of Hummus, before finally heading east into Pakistan, through the Bluchistan Desert to Lahore, up to Islamabad, up to the Hyber Pass, up to the Hundra Pass, the highest border crossing in the world with China. Then my visa expired, went back to London to get a new visa. Then the coronavirus happened, so I can't fly back to Pakistan, so I'm now waiting for the world to reopen to finish my trip, and I've got a long way to go. Okay, before we begin, let me go over a few things. So, the setup I have on this bike uh, now is completely different to the setup I had when I first left London 16 months ago. Uh, and I've spent the past year, over a year now, chopping and changing things, getting rid of stuff, buying new things, um, things that I don't maybe use. Um, and uh, finally, I can safely say, I've finally got the ultimate adventure bike setup, which is perfect for me. Now that is the key. So don't think that if you're doing a trip, you've got to do everything exactly how, like I've got it. And similarly, if you, you're you thinking, why hasn't he got this? Why hasn't he got this? Well, for me, this works. So everyone's different. So for example, everyone told me before I left, oh, don't have a backpack. Within the first week, you'll get tired of carrying it on your back and your shoulders will hurt. And it's just scared of it now. Uh, whereas I've worn this every single day for over a year. And I love it, it's got my camel pack, I've got my stuff in there, it's perfect. So, also, some people told me, oh, get rid of your tank bag. You don't, you don't need a tank bag, tank bags are stupid, they get in your way. Whereas I charge all my stuff in this, I use it every day, it's a lifesaver. I can't imagine traveling without it. So, those are just two examples of people who've told me things that I should do differently. Um, and some of these people have traveled before, some of them have never traveled ever in their lives. So, what I'm saying is if you're planning a trip, don't listen to everyone. Just do what works for you, and that is probably the best bit of advice I can actually give. 
I can't really give any advice. I suck at giving advice, but yeah, <laughs> you get the idea. So just do what works for you. And if there's things in here that I've got, maybe that you think, for example, I've got loads of power banks. I've got like five, six power banks. You might think that's a bit overkill. That probably is a bit overkill. Um, but for me, it works for me because I need all that power when I'm charging in my tent because I'm always off the grid. If I was always in hotels, then I wouldn't need those power banks because I could just charge in a power supply. So little things like that. So this is my setup, which works for me. So if you've got any negative comments about what I have here, keep them to yourself. Okay, right, with that said, let's do this. Let's begin with the bike. So this is the Honda CRF 250L. It's the 2017 model with ABS. And I picked this up for maybe 18 months ago or so from Honda Motor Den in North London. So a massive thanks to George Dennison and all the team at Honda Motor Den who have been unbelievable. Um, they helped me out with the bike. Uh, and then ever since then, they've just been epic. So when I get into problems, when I, because I'm not the best <laughs> with mechanics, if I get into problems, I can call them, FaceTime them, message them, whatever. And they'll always help me out. Uh, they even sent me some parts out uh, when I was in Lahore. Uh, with all the crashes I've had, <laughs> I ruined the steering column bearings. And uh, George sent some new parts out uh, with some other stuff as well. So much thanks to you, George, all the guys at Honda Motor Den. And if you're looking at getting a, a bike, then you should get a Honda, because they're the best. <laughs> then definitely go and, uh, and speak to George. So yeah, and all right, so the bike, it has been unbelievable. I mean, I when I first started planning this trip, I instantly started looking at the big bikes. So I looked at the Triumph Tiger 800, the BMW 800 GS, uh, 650 GS. I even looked at a Bonneville at one point and the Africa Twin, of course, and all these bigger bikes. But if you've seen, I'm a super skinny guy. I mean, I'm even skinnier now because I got food poisoning in Lahore a few months ago. So I'm even skinnier now. But I'm a skinny guy, I'm not the strongest person. And I, you know, if I fall and I crash, which I do all the time, I crash most days. Um, I, if I can't lift the bike up, I'm screwed because I'm by myself, I'm traveling alone. And I've met so many people who can't lift their own bike up. And I'm thinking, if you're in the middle of nowhere, if you're on the Pamir Highway or whatever, and you fall down. How do you get your bike up? You've got to take all the luggage off and it's a nightmare. Whereas this small bike is perfect. The reason we do these trips is to have a sense of freedom. But if you can't lift your own bike up by yourself, you've got no freedom, you're stuck, you're restricted to where you can travel. Whereas I can go wherever I like, I know that I can pick this bike up, have no issues at all, and it is just, it is the best. I honestly think, yeah, a small bike is the way to go, especially if you've got a similar body type to me. Um, but anyone, you don't, need, you don't need a bigger bike. Small bikes are becoming more and more popular now, and it's crazy for, you could literally do, you could buy a small bike, like the CRF 250, and do a trip, you know, halfway around the world, for the same price as some of these big adventure bikes. And people always say, it's 250, 250, is that enough to go around the world? You know, that's not enough power. And think about it, as soon as you leave Europe, every single local bike you see is a 125 or a 70cc. CG125, the Suzuki 150, you know, they're all small bikes. No one has big bikes. So actually, I'm actually what the fastest on the road. I overtake everyone and I'm on a 250. And even that is too fast. You know, I don't need to go too fast. If you go too fast, you skip, you miss everything. You don't see it all. So it's like, why would you go for a bigger bike? Which is just more expensive. It draws more attention to yourself. So you stand out more. You're going through an area where maybe they, they don't earn much money. Um, and you're riding this big expensive bike that's probably worth more than they'll ever earn in a lifetime. You know, it's a bit flashy. Whereas you want something a bit smaller, it blends in. Um, I mean, these boxes do are, are quite shiny and do stand out, but it's a smaller bike, um, and you know, it's and it's cheap to, on fuel, it's cheap to run, and it's Honda, so you can get parts everywhere. So after my my bike trip uh, across um, Asia five six years ago, and then my South America trip four three years ago, I've always had Hondas. Then I always had a Honda, and you can always get parts of them, and that's why I love Honda because you can get parts anywhere in the world. Which you go for, if you go for another bike. I don't know, BMW parts are quite hard to find. I think in India, it's quite tough to get BMW parts there. And the import tax on BMW parts is expensive. So I just think the Honda CF350 is an epic, epic bike. Um, and yeah, if you've been following my trip, you'll know what I've been up to and what problems I've had. And I've had no problems with the bike all the way from London to the border of Pakistan. It was only my first week no, my first day, my first day in Pakistan, as I crossed from Iran at Taftan through Baluchistan, you know, running parallel to uh, the Afghanistan border, 
the first day in Pakistan with the escort, because you have to be escorted for security reasons, the bike broke down. And uh, and it actually ended up being a blessing because I met the most amazing people, had the most amazing experience. And when the thing when things go wrong, that's when the best things happen. So that was the only issue I've had this whole time on this trip was the first day in Pakistan um, when the bike broke. And it turned out all it was was just a dodgy, a loose wire connection, uh, wire come loose uh, towards the battery. Caused lots of hassle trying to sort it out and many, many weeks. But actually it was, as I said, it was a blessing because I met so many people who had a really cool experience. And it was actually one of the highlights of my trip, which is strange. So I should break down more often. Um, and apart from that, I had two problems with the tank uh, leaking. Once in uh, Albania, I think maybe a year, year ago or so. And then in Iran, prior into Pakistan, five, six months ago, the, the, the fuel tank started leaking. And um, this is actually an aftermarket fuel tank. This is not the original Honda. So if I'd stuck with the original Honda tank, I would have had no problems for the entire time until Pakistan, which is pretty sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, this tank's actually now been recalled. I was, I was supposed to destroy it, but I just found some silicone and resealed it because I, I couldn't destroy it. Even though the company told me it was damaged and faulty and dangerous. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. And you know, I was going through, I didn't plan the trip very well, right? So I was riding through the Balkans, through Turkey in the middle of the winter. Like it was like minus 15. It was crazy high altitude. The bike was chugging along because it was lack of oxygen, but it made it through. And then I was riding through the uh, through Southeastern Iran, through the Lut Desert, one of the hottest deserts on the, on the planet um, in the middle of summer. So you're running through the Balkans and Turkey in, in the middle of winter, then you run through the middle of uh, middle of summer, like 50 plus degrees. It's just been unbelievable, and it's just, it's handled everything. The crazy cold, the crazy heat, it just does it. This bike is just a machine. It's a tank. It just plods along. It really is epic. So, yeah, that is what I have to say about the bike. If you're thinking of doing a trip, I have a feeling these bikes are gonna are gonna do more and more around the world trips. I mean, these are these are such epic bikes. So versatile really reliable and and cheap to cheap to buy and cheap to run and cheap to repair so yeah if you're thinking of doing a trip i would 110 percent recommend the 2f250 if you've seen some of my problems on the you know in the updates don't let that put you off it's only it probably looks like it's happened loads because it happened all the, all the problems happened at the same time this bike honestly has been amazing it's been really awesome so yeah right that's that so the bike is epic zebedust that's awesome in Urdu. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! No way! The bike! The bike is... <laughs> <laughs> No way! They fixed the bike! Was it the it was the ECU? It was a miracle. <laughs> Unbelievable right way to go and to work with these guys. This is incredible! <laughs> yes! This is the best day ever. Alright then. <laughs> ciao ciao!